All right, this is notes 10 1, graphs of inverses. So, inverses are the opposite. So, whenever you are graphing from a table, okay, to graph the first one just as it is. So, we go over negative 2, up a quarter, put a point over 1, up a half, put a point over 0, 1, put a point over 1, up 2, put a point over 2, up 4. Four, put a point over three of eight, or four, five, six, seven, eight. And then our graph is like that. Okay, to do the inverse, inverse is the opposite. So I'm going to take my x and my y axis, and I'm going to switch it. Okay, so these guys here, I'm going to switch them. So this guy is now 0.25, this guy is negative 2. Just switch your x and y. So 0 0.5, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3. Then you graph this one. This is our inverse table. So over 0.25, down 2, put a point over... 0.5, down 1, put a point, over 1, 0, put a point, 2, 1, put a point, 4, 2, point, 8, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, up 3, 1, 2, 3, put a point, and it goes, and I can see that these guys are just the opposite, okay, now they're not going across the they're not reflecting across my y, they're not reflecting across my x, they're reflecting across our original, the old original faithful y equals x. Okay? Alright, so the same thing on the next one. Over negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 10, that's all the way. Over negative 2, up 7. Over negative 1, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 0, up 1, over 1, up, or down 2, um, over 2, down 5, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, over 3, down 8, 6, 7, 8, over 4, down 11, that's 1 off. So I go. Okay, now we flip them for our inverse. So 10, negative 3. 7, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 5, 2, uh, negative 8, 3, and negative 11, 4. Okay, graph our new table, our inverse table, over 10, down 3, 1, 2, 3, put a point, over 7, down 2, put a point, over 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, put a point, over 1, 0, over negative 2, 1, negative 5, that's 3, 4, 5, up 2, over negative 8, and up 3, and then over negative 11, which is off the chart, up 4, and it goes... And so it took this guy and flipped it over that way. Okay. Next one is that. So those were with our tables, finding inverses with our tables, just flipping the x and y. So if I have equations, I want to write the equation for the inverse. I just same thing. I'm going to flip the x and y, solve for y. So instead of y equals, it's going to be x equals 4y plus 8. Now we're solving for y. Most of us like to use our y on the left side equal sign, so we're going to move it across, move everything else over to this side, to the left side. So 4y, when I crossed it over, became a negative 4y, equals the x. When it crossed over, it became a negative 1x, or negative x, same thing. And there was already a plus 8 on the right side equal sign. So solve for y. Right now it's being multiplied by negative 4, so I do the opposite, which is divide by negative 4. And y equals a negative or a negative is a positive, and it's 1 fourth, leave it a fraction. If it doesn't break down and divide evenly, or it does not reduce, just leave it as it is. 
Then I have a positive 8 divided by negative 4. That gives me negative 2. That is the inverse equation of the first one. They would be opposite. If I graphed them both or found their tables, they would be opposite tables like you did on the first one, where you switch the x and the y. Okay, number four says f of x equals, we freak out when we say f of x, but all f of x means is y equals. Okay, that's our original equation. So our inverse, we do the opposite. So it be x equals seven minus five y. Again, move our y across, move my x across over here. So negative five y crosses and becomes a positive five y equals, x goes across, becomes a negative one x. And there was already a positive 7 waiting for me. Divide by 5 to solve for y. y equals negative over positive is a negative. 1 fifth, it doesn't reduce, doesn't divide evenly. 7 fifths will not divide evenly and does not reduce. So I leave it 7 fifths so it's exact. That is the inverse of the original equation. And then number 5. For number 5, same thing, change my x and my y. So this is x equals 8y squared minus 6. Okay, I'm going to move my 8y squared across, move my x across. So 8y squared crossed over becomes a negative 8y squared. The x crosses over becomes a negative 1x. And that was already a negative 6 weight. To get rid of the negative 8, I divide everything in the club by negative 8. And now I have y squared equals negative over negative is a positive 1 over 8. It doesn't reduce, so 1 8 x. Negative over negative is a positive. 6 over 8 will reduce. 2 goes into both of them. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 8 4 times. Now, we're not done yet. we got y squared. How do I get rid of y squared? We learned last unit that any the opposite of y squared is, or right, ending squared would be square root. So I'm going to square root, and that takes it to a y equals this here. We just leave it as the square root of 1 8 x plus 3 fourths. And that is the inverse of the beginning. Okay. Now we'll move on. Wants me to write the inverse of this guy, then graph them both. Okay, on the same graph. So we're going to do the inverse of it first. So we have x equals 2y plus 4. Move my 2y across, move my x across. That's negative 2y equals negative 1x plus 4. To get rid of negative 2, I divide by negative 2. Y equals negative over negative is a positive, it's 1 over 2, that's 1 half. The x, 4 divided by negative 2, negative 2. So now I have my inverse. Here's my original equation. We take our calculator, we're going to build a table. So y equals, to clear out anything that's in, 2x plus 4. Go to our table. And we're just going to pick a couple of points on either side of zero. Okay, so I'm going to go with negative two all the way to positive two. And then I'll just write these down. So I'm going to write it over here, x, y. Reading them right off my calculator, negative two. They're for this graph here, for that original graph. Negative two is zero. Negative one is two. Zero is four. Um, 1 is 6, right. and 2 is 8. Graph it over negative 2 of 0, negative 1 of 2, 0 of 4, 1 of 6, 2 of 8. This guy into my calculator and find my table, go to my table, it'll show this guy is flipped. So this one belongs to this guy. This table is the inverse 0, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 
four, zero, and six, one, and eight, two. Before I graph it, it says is the relation a function? That means the original. Is the original a function? In order to find out if this graph is a function, we use the vertical line test. So if I did a vertical line anywhere on it, it only crosses once, which means that yes, it is a function. So it's going to want to know if the inverse is a function. So let's graph it. It goes with that one. And let's see. Over 0 down 2, over 2 down 1, over 4, 3, 4, 0, 6, 1. And eight two. And sure enough, no matter where I draw a vertical line on that guy as well, it would be a function. Okay, number seven. Find the table x y. And we got clear x squared plus one. And we graph it, and we're going to see that it's a parabola. So we want the vertex, and then give me a couple of points on each side. So we know the vertex is at zero, because it was right on the midline. So here we go. Let's go negative two to positive two. I'm just going to copy them right out of my table. So negative two is five. Negative one is two. Zero was one. One is two, and two is five. Go over and graph it, over negative two of five, put a point, over negative one of two, over zero of one, and it repeats itself, because it's a parabola. And anywhere, it says is this relation a function, anywhere I draw a vertical line, it will only cross it once. That is a yes. Now let's do the inverse. First, we need to do the graph for it. So remember, this is y equals. So this now, so the inverse would be x equals y squared plus 1. If I move the y squared across, move the x across, that's a negative 1y squared equals negative 1x plus 1. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. y squared equals 1 over 1, negative 1 over negative 1 is a positive 1x, or just x. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Now to get rid of y squared, the opposite of y squared is square root. So y equals square root x minus 1. There's my inverse equation. The inverse graph would be the opposite of this graph. So x, y, right now the opposite, 5, negative 2, 2, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, and 5, 2. Let's graph this guy. He belongs to him. So let's graph him over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 2, 1, 2. Over 2, 1, 2, down 1. Over 1, 0. And then it's going to repeat itself because it is a parabola that has just been reflected. And if I did a vertical line test on that guy, it would be a no. Okay, last one. If y equals x to the third power, clear x raised to the third power. We graph, oh, let's take a look at the graph. We see it as going to be an s. So I want a point here and a couple of points on either side. So it's zero, zero, and a couple of points on either side. So there's my zero, zero. So we'll start with negative two again. I'm going to copy them straight out of here. X, Y, negative two is negative eight. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, two, eight. Over negative two, not eight. Point negative one one zero zero. Oh, I messed that up. That one's not there. That one's not there. Sorry. Over negative two down eight. Over negative one down one zero zero one one two eight. 
two, make an S, okay, and keep on going out and over it as well. Anywhere I draw a vertical line, it'll only cross once, so yes, it's a function. And then we can use the horizontal line test to tell if the inverse is a function. The horizontal line test means if I put my pen or my line sideways, if it only crosses once, then that means that the inverse would also be a function because that's the opposite of a vertical line test. So if a horizontal line test works, then it is a yes as well. You could flip the graph and graph it, and you would see build a vertical line test and tell as well that way. Okay? But if I had done that on this one, this is the original. If I did a horizontal line test, I see that it would have crossed twice, which means that the inverse is a no. Well, when we graphed the inverse, we saw a yes. In fact, it was a no when I did a vertical line test on it. So a horizontal line test on the original, if it's a no, means that a vertical line test on the inverse would also be a no. Okay? Problems that we did. We did A10-1, numbers 1, 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, and 15. This concludes the notes for 10-1.